one. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Photographic Memory Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the program. Dr. Shannon Panzo. Dr. Shannon, how are you? What's going on? Oh, life is great. Everything's going good. Uh, the sun the sun came up this morning. It didn't hide itself. So that's good. Everything's good. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, uh, again, we know Dr. Shannon's a photographic memory expert if you've been following the podcast. He is not just a photographic memory expert, but a brain management expert. And you can get mentoring from him today by going to zuxpro.com, but also, you know, start zuxpro training now. But wow, wow, wow. See, I meet you. You don't tell me about getting, being able to go out of body experience. What a story you gave us on last episode. I'm like, really? So people that have tuned into, I guess now this is episode 19 or 20. I have to figure out. I'm not like, we're not like, you know, but I was like blown away by the story. Well, that's, that was a great one. Wasn't that a good, that's a good faux pas blown away by the story. Okay. Well, uh, essentially when, whenever people have life-changing events, uh, most people will have a life-changing event that changes their life in a very small way. And then over time, the difference becomes larger and larger. Okay. So most people have that happen. In this case here, I was literally blown up into an entirely exactly. new profession. <laughs> yeah. Because you surviving says I'm all in. That was the all in thing, Dr. Shannon. You're saying I'm all in. And when we have those kind of life-changing events, we say we're all in, but yet it takes time. It doesn't just happen overnight that you're all in. You have to kind of buy in more and more of the system. Right. Well, I didn't, I didn't really understand what was in store for me at that particular time. And I had just gone through something that was uh, purely dynamic in, in what was happening. Um, you know, dealing with explosives is one thing. Taking all the precautions is another. Exactly. And most uh, most people that are in the explosive profession for a long time end up missing digits on their hands. So <laughs> uh, exactly. I still have all of my I still have all of my digits. Thank you. And uh, but whenever this happened to me, uh, it came out of the blue. But the thing is, is because I had been using the process, uh, I'd really been able to tune in. I'd been able to tune in to everything happening around me. It raised my awareness, my perception levels, uh, my ability to perceive things. Uh, I had premonitions leading up to the event. The, uh, the premonitions really didn't tell me what was going to happen. It just said something big is going to happen. And sure enough, it was big. <laughs> so very big. Uh, so what ends up happening is I literally, uh, while working with the explosives, I got blown up. And uh, due to uh, due to an out of body experience that I had at that particular moment, uh, when I when the explosion happened uh, due to that uh, translocation, my guardian angel protecting me, uh, all these things coming into focus all at the same time. I walked away from this horrible accident completely unscathed. Yes, which is unbelievable. Yeah. And, and I have the evidence, I have the proof and, exactly. and all the rest of it. But I, I should have been blown into little bits, but that's okay. I'm here to, I'm here to talk about it today. Uh, the good thing is what actually came of this was, uh, was a, uh, a change of operations. You know, my, my occupation changed. But before that, <clears throat> whenever you are in the middle of creating a miracle, yeah. <laughs> People start treating you differently. They do. And even though, I mean, after I got blown up, I, I went right back to work the same, the same day I went back to work um, and finished out the shift. Now, 
people around me thought I was nuts, but that's okay. Uh, they weren't in, they weren't me. Exactly. They weren't the ones that were so prepared for the event that, okay, I just dusted myself off and moved on. And that's essentially how I handled it. But people around you, they start treating you differently. Uh, there was, uh, people were wondering what this was all about, what this all, all had to, you know, all had to do with anything. And I was getting, I was getting some serious questions from some, some really serious people wanting to know some answers as to how I was able to survive this thing. And exactly. And this is how I survived it. This is what, uh, this is what happened. It, it transcended me to a new place. Now, in this regard, what was the good thing that happened out of all this <clears throat> was at that particular time, Richard Welch needed to uh, have an, uh, a good person working, uh, working for him. And I happened yes. to change my occupation from uh, working with explosives as an explosive technician over to uh, working with Richard. <clears throat> now, right. He also, because he created the process, he invented the process, he had used the process for his own enlightenment, for his own processes. And he himself had insights. He saw something within me that I didn't realize at that time. And for whatever reason, he, that's why he brought me under, under his tutelage. That's why he exactly. became my mentor. And so I spent the next, oh, 30 years working directly with him. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And so, and once he helped you learn that, you wanted to soak up everything he knows like a sponge, didn't you? Oh, yeah. And, and also, I came into this understanding that, yes, this is so important for people because look what it did for me. It saved my life. But it's so important for people. I mean, just think if you're a, a policeman, a fireman, uh, right. somebody in the military, uh, uh, a deep rock miner, whatever. Things of emergency can happen instantaneously. If you have a awareness and understanding of these things and and have that grasp where you can where you can look into into the future i guess you could say uh where exactly you can anticipate these things you can change the outcome uh people often ask me well if i didn't have the training would i have survived well the likelihood of that is probably not but right. you're also you're also looking at uh causality because i was a explosives worker because I was taking the training that I was training because I right. needed to have that awareness. All these things came together and created it, created a new function. And that's what gave me the premonitions. Exactly. That's why I was exactly. able to take steps. Now back to, uh, back to Richard. Uh, I've, I've, been heavily traveled. I've been heavily educated, and the mental photography has given me uh, a great flexibility, uh, a great alacrity with the um, with the way right. that I can communicate with people. And this again is one of the the great blessings that I've had from this is being able to communicate with people and help them solve their issues. And the mental photography is actually the fulcrum point. The mental photography exactly. allows you to, to gain your, your photographic memory, gain your access to that back, start utilizing it in your life. So from that point on, uh, you know, it, it really is a great thing. <clears throat> Definitely. So the, uh, the opportunity of being mentored by Richard and Richard was not the type of person that would mentor people. He wanted, uh, 
His strategy okay. was, I'm coming in to teach people how to do this. And once they learn, uh, learn the basics, how to do it, I'm moving on to the next set of people. So he always had new people coming into, uh, coming into his class. He always, there was always a need for new people. Uh, they saw a need that they needed what he had. So there was always that need. And this is his strategy. It's also my strategy. Now, uh, there are a few, uh, a few differences, namely because when I first met him, Zox Pro didn't, uh, it actually wasn't yeah. there. He was primarily doing seminars. So when the internet came along, we hopped on the internet and created Zox Pro and uh, we've been doing that ever since that way. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a really good time doing all this. And again, what are we all, what are we doing? We're helping people. We're helping people be better. Yes. All right. So what another interesting episode. Next, we're going to be talking to somebody that you know very well. Isn't that right, Dr. Shannon? Oh, yes. Uh, next episode is Dr. Ted Valley. A very interesting person, and you'll get to know him. <laughs> Get to know him and get to know how he learned knew, knows you and Zuxpro, right? That's right. And right. he's a, yeah. he's had he's had wonderful success with it. Awesome. Can't wait to learn. So that you can go to Zuxpro.com right now. You can follow Dr. Shannon on all different uh, social media platforms and appreciate it, Dr. Shannon. Again, make sure you never get blown up again unless you can survive again. <laughs> well, at least I know how to handle explosives. <laughs> you know, you not just that you can have out more out of auto experiences as we'll learn. All right, Dr. Shannon, take care. Thank you. Have a great all right, day. All right. All right. Thanks. That was again, the photographic memory podcast. Take care.